Welcome this morning, everyone, and uh, bienvenidos, hermanos. We are welcoming also our Spanish congregation, our English congregation together. We're so glad, so much fun to have a, have a joint service, and uh, I am loving it, and I know you, uh, you gringos enjoy sp singing Spanish lyrics, and it's just fun. Praise the Lord. It's just fun. Uh, you know, one day Jesus gathered his followers together, and he asked them a question. He said, uh, I want to ask all of you this. Who do, be, who do people say that I am? What are they saying out there? Who do they say I am? And so his disciples began to give him answers. Well, I've heard that people think you're John the Baptist. Someone else said, uh, some people think you're e Elijah. Uh, some people think you're Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. And then Jesus said, yeah, but who do you say that I am? Who do you believe that I am? And Simon Peter spoke up and he said, well, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. How many of you know he had it right? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. That's who he is, the Messiah, the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. But Jesus responded then to Peter. He said, you know, Peter, you're, you're Peter. You're, uh, you're a rock. You're a stone. And he said, and upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And right there, Jesus began to put forth this idea of church. The church, the gathering of God, the New Testament body of Christ. People coming together, having church, doing church, worshiping in church, being in the house of God, being the house of God. Uh, Jesus' followers were beginning to be called now the church. And so Jesus begins right there in Matthew 16, establishing the church. He said he's building the church. I'm so glad to be a part of something Jesus is building. Praise the Lord. I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of God's plan. Uh, he said, hell can't stop the church. How many, of you how many of you glad to be in a place that hell can't stop us? Amen. That's right. Hell itself cannot stop us. The church is actually an amazing thing. So many people today are down on church. They say, I don't have to go to church. I don't want to go to church. But I don't think people realize how amazing and how wonderful church actually is. I think we ought to think about the wonder of church. I, I think we ought to think about the advantages of church. And we ought to think about what happens in a house of God in a church. So I want to talk to you just for a few moments today on Fun Day Sunday. I want to talk to you about the wonder of the church. What is the church all about? It's interesting in that, that story that I just uh, reminded you of, uh, that, that day that Jesus talked to those disciples, and when he said, who do, who do the people on the outside out there, the world, who, who are those people saying that I am? And, and they said, well, you're John the Baptist, or maybe you're Elijah, or maybe you're uh, Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. You know, it's interesting that John the Baptist was gone by that time. Uh, Elijah was gone. Jeremiah was gone. And so in essence, the world was saying, well, we think Jesus is a voice from the past. We think he's one of those old prophets that used to prophesy. You know, he used to have a message, but all that's in the past. How many of you know that's what the world thinks about Jesus right now, that he's just a voice from the past? That what he has to say has no relevance for us today. That he's not really in the now. He's not really relevant to what we're dealing with at this moment. The world thinks Jesus has nothing to do with their life, their problem, their issues. But the fact is, Simon Peter had it right. Jesus is the anointed one. Jesus is the Christ of God. Jesus is the Son. He is. He's not a has-been. He is the Son of the living God, and He really is the answer for all of earth's problems. Amen, somebody? Can you give the Lord another hand clap today? He really is. This, this understanding was seated deeply in the heart of Peter. I, I believe this is the hard bedrock of the kingdom of God, of what the church is built upon, this, this message from heaven. You see, people hear earth's voices. Earth will have one bit of information, but heaven has another bit of information. Earth may have their opinion about Jesus. The world may have their opinion of Christ Jesus, but they're wrong. I'll tell you who knows who Jesus is, the Father in heaven. 
Jesus told Peter, he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. He said, you've heard from heaven. You've heard from the Father in heaven. And folks, that's what the church is all about. For us to shut down the voice of the earth and to begin to hear from heaven. How many of you know that's the real information? That's the right message. That's the truth that sets men free. We need to hear from heaven. Did you know that's what the church is all about? No other entity, no other organization, no other establishment in this world is totally committed to and used by God as the, the, as the conduit to display the word of the living God. Only the church has heard from heaven. Only the church knows who Jesus is. And only the church can connect human beings with a loving Father in heaven. And that's the purpose of the church. Peter shows us a microcosm of the church, what the church is all about in the book of Acts. Jesus went to the cross, died, was buried, rose again, ascended into heaven, and then sent his Holy Spirit back. And the church began to operate in Acts chapter 2. And I want to read to you from Acts chapter 2, just about five verses, because it gives us a great picture of what really the church is all about. Now I'm reading from uh, a relatively new uh, modern translation. It's called the ERV, the easy to read version. It makes it so simple, even a preacher can understand the Bible. And, and you might think that's funny, but there's a lot of preachers that are mixed up on what the Bible says. But uh, the easy to read version is really, really a, a really neat new version. And so I want to read from that because it makes it so simple. Listen to what Peter said in Acts 2 verse 38. Peter said to them, now again, this is the first day of the operation of the church. And by the way, lots of folks had come to church. The church was 120 people, 120 strong. But the Holy Spirit came, and the Holy Spirit drew a crowd. Thousands of people came to hear what the church had to say. Thousands of people gathered in the streets asking the church to explain this phenomenon of the Holy Spirit being in the earth. And so they were all ears. And so Peter stood up and began to give them the message of God. Here's what he said. Peter said to them, change your hearts and lives and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. How many of you know the church is all about hearts changing, lives changing? That's the message of Jesus, that he wants us to turn our hearts toward him. And if we'll turn our hearts toward Him, if we'll change the attitude of our heart from unbelief to belief, from uh, uh, desiring sin to desiring His righteousness, if we will turn our hearts toward Him, He can change our lives. And then when a person's life is changed and they begin to follow Jesus and they begin to seek God, then the Bible commands us to be baptized. He mentions water baptism here because baptism is a picture of the gospel. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. As a person goes down in the water, that's the death of Jesus. Under, he's buried, uh, the burial of Jesus. And then when he comes up, that's symbolic of Jesus' resurrection. But even more than that, it's a picture of our death, burial, and resurrection. We have died to sin. We've been immersed in Christ. And we have been raised up by God's Holy Spirit to live a brand new life. Our lives are changed. Did you know that's the message of the church? Who else is speaking that message? It's not the universities. It's not the U.S. Congress. It's not coming from anywhere else. It's not, certainly not coming from Hollywood. How many of you know? It's coming from the church. That our lives and hearts can be changed. And Jesus can become our Savior. Here's what Peter said. He said, then God will forgive your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What a wonderful thing to have your sins thrown away, forgiven, cast away as far as the east is from the west. That's the promise of God, that each one of us can have all of our sins forgiven. And on top of that, this wonderful Holy Spirit can come into our hearts and begin to speak to us individually, begin to help us, begin to empower us, begin to illuminate us. How did Peter hear from heaven? How was it that the Father told Peter that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? It was the ministry of the Holy Spirit. 
And you know what he's teaching us here? That in church, every single one of us can receive the Holy Spirit in our heart. If we're born again, the Holy Spirit can come in our heart and we can begin to hear from heaven. And God can begin to reveal His secrets to us. And we can begin to hear the message that the world is not hearing. We can begin to hear the truths that the world cannot hear. The world only hears the world. The church hears from heaven. Somebody give God praise. That's an awesome thing. I said, that's an awesome thing. Peter said, this promise is for you. Everybody say me. It's also for your children. Everybody say my children. My grandchildren. Did you know that children can hear from heaven? Did you know that children can be blessed in church? Did you know that children can be born again? Did you know that an eight or ten year old little kid can come close to God, hear from heaven, enjoy the blessing of God? That's why we have children's ministry around here. That's why every one of us ought to put our kids in children's church. Because on their level, we can, we can speak the message of Jesus into their lives. They can hear from heaven. They're not just going to come with their parents to church. No, they're going to go to the house of God themselves. They're going to hear from God themselves. They're going to be having their hearts changed themselves. I want my kids and my grandkids to know Jesus themselves. Amen? Yeah, that's what Peter taught. He said, it's for you, your kids, and for people who are far away. It is for everyone that God is calling. Everyone can come, even people far away. Some of us have relatives, you know, and friends. They're far away from God. How many of you know somebody right now? Put your hand up. They're far away from God. They're not even thinking about God. You ought to invite them to church. When you come to church, they're going to encounter the presence of God, the Spirit of God, the message of God. Next thing you know, they'll be wanting God. They may never want God until you kidnap them, put them in your pickup truck, and bring them to church. <laughs> Amen. Come on, bring, bring them to church. Because He's for everyone. I think that's good. Verse 40, Peter warned them with many other words and begged them, save yourselves from the evil of the people who live now. That's an interesting statement. Save yourselves. You know, only Jesus can save you from your sins, but only you can save yourself from a world gone crazy. You have to make some decisions. You have to decide to come apart. You have to decide to be separated. You have to decide to go to church. You have to decide to hear from heaven. You have to decide to act on the Word of God. Amen, somebody? So he's talking about what the, our part. We need to save ourselves from the evil of the people who live now. You know what he's saying? We need to be a different kind of people. We don't need to be living lives like they do out there. We don't, know, well, we don't have to. We've heard from heaven. We've heard a new message. We've heard the truth about Jesus. We don't have to live in sin. We don't have to live in decadence. We don't have to live in rebellion toward God. Somebody praise God today. We can be different. We don't have to share in the sins of this world. If you think you can be a Christian and live in the world at the same time, you are mighty, mighty mixed up. I'm telling you, that's not the message of the church. The message of the church is we're going to come apart. We're going to be different. We're going to live different kinds of lives. Our lives have been changed. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Now, how many of you can see Peter was giving them a strong message of truth? He's talking about heart change, life change, baptism, forgiveness, the Holy Spirit. He's talking about reaching us, reaching our kids, reaching far away people. You know, there's some people far, farther away than your brother-in-law on the east side. There's people in China. There's people in Asia. There's people in Central America. That's why we send our missionaries. We're wanting to, we want to find these people far away. He says it's for everyone. He says we need to save ourselves. We need to sanctify ourselves. We need to separate ourselves. We need to be a different kind of people. So, I mean, he's, he's, it's like the first day of the church he's given them the whole load. Amen? I believe every time the church comes together, we ought to give them the whole load. We're not supposed to hold anything back. Let's tell people the truth. Let's stop being careful. Let's stop being politically correct. Let's stop thinking that we, you know, maybe they can't handle it. Come on, the world is dying and they need to hear from heaven. They need to hear from heaven. Then those who accepted what Peter said were baptized. They began to act on the gospel. They began to obey God. On that day, about 3,000 people were added to the group of believers. Oh, yeah, come on, yeah, 3,000. 
3,000. We got a pretty big crowd here today, but it isn't 3,000. But we can have 3,000. Why don't we believe for 3,000? Come on, let's believe for 3,000. In the thousand. Some people say, well, I just like a little church. Well, the first church was 3,120 on the very first day of operation. We should quit thinking small. God's big. Come on, let's think big. Let's believe big. Let's do something big for God. Amen. And then he says the believers spent their time. Well, what do you do after you get them saved? What do you do after they join? They spent their time listening to the teaching of the apostles, listening to this message from heaven. They shared everything with each other. They shared their lives, their testimonies. They shared their tables. They shared their love with each other. Then they ate together. I'm so glad God doesn't insist on us being super spiritual every moment. It's okay to eat at church. It's okay to go to the food truck, get a little barbecue. Come on, somebody. Did you know God's in every moment of your life, not just the prayer moments? He's there all the time. Yes, God is in your barbecue. They ate together and they prayed together. Everybody say listening. Sharing, eating, and praying. That's what the church is all about. You know it's always been about eating. Everybody say it again. Listening. I'm glad you're listening today. Sharing, eating, and praying. That's what we're supposed to be doing at church. And then finally, verse 43. Many wonders and miraculous signs were happening. In other words, many lives were being changed. Many miracles of healings were occurring. Many people were getting set free from the devil's power. God was answering many of their prayers. Yeah, many wonders and miraculous signs were happening through the apostles. And then the final effect, watch this. And everyone felt great respect for God. Isn't that, isn't that the goal that we as human beings have great respect for God. I feel sorry for people that don't attend a good church, a house of God. How will they ever, ever develop a great respect for God if they're never around God? If they're never around God's people? If they're never in touch with God's Holy Spirit? If they never hear from heaven and if they never hear the truth, and if they don't get to eat a little barbecue with the people of God, how in the world are they going to ever know that there's a better life, a different life, a blessed life? Come on, somebody. A heavenly life that can be lived on this planet. Wow. We're going to pray together because they prayed together in the first day of the first church. Let's all stand together. We're going to pray together. And I want our prayer team to come down. We've got English-speaking and Spanish-speaking prayer partners that are going to come down. We're going to offer prayer for any and everybody that wants prayer for any reason whatsoever. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never been forgiven of your sins. You've never been saved. These guys are trained in praying that prayer of faith. Come on in over to the center, guys. Fill up the gap in the middle. Uh, maybe you need healing like Vanessa. You can be healed. Your miracle can start right now. Maybe your life needs to be changed, like Lolly, like David, we heard on the testimonies. Their lives have been changed. So many lives have been changed around here. Let's ask God for your life to begin to change. It could be anything and everything. I had a young lady come in the first service say, you know what? I'm going to court tomorrow. They're going to decide where my little girl goes to spend her life, with me or with my ex. And she says, I really need her to come with me. I don't know the situation, but I know God knows the situation. So I prayed, God, just bring peace. Lord, bring cor something correct, something wonderful, something that's a blessing. Lord, get this little girl in the right place. Come on, God does answer our prayers. And I'm expecting a good report from that tomorrow. I'm telling you, Jesus can heal you. Jesus can save you. Jesus can fill you with His Holy Spirit. Jesus can do anything you need Him to do. And all we have to do really is ask and believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, today we pray in Jesus' name. May we become a house of God that 
absolutely sees multiplied miracles happening in so many people's lives, thousands of lives. We're thinking big thoughts. We're dreaming big dreams. Lord God, we're looking for big things and we're believing for big miracles in people's lives. Lord, I pray, be God in people's lives. Prove that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of the living God. Prove that He is alive today and He's the same yesterday, today, and forever through Your mighty, mighty Holy Spirit in our lives. We believe You for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you need prayer, come right now if you would. I'm just, we're going to dismiss here in a couple of moments, but I want you to come right now and let these people begin to pray for you right now. Just come out, come out of the balconies, come out of the risers. And uh, they're going to begin to pray. And even after we're dismissed and release you outside for some fun, they're still going to be here praying. And so uh, we're not going to rush you. You don't have to hurry. But we invite you to come. Everybody say, Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that. And I learned that at church. Come on, give the Lord a big hand clap now.